In today's video, we are going to be creating a platform that moves with the player inside of Roblox Studio, or I guess we could say the player that will be moving with the platform that we're going to be creating. I guess the first thing we should start off with is a part. So let's insert a part right here. I'm going to scale it out to be four studs by four studs like this. That we have a square. You can customize this however you would like to. However, I'm just going to leave it how it is, and I'm going to rename this one to platform just like this with a capital P. Let's also duplicate this and move it over a little bit and we can name this one to endpoint. This is going to be the endpoint that we want our platform to reach before we'll go back to where it started. And I'm going to set the transparency of this one to one. I'm going to set can collide to false, can query to false, and can touch to false. And then we can select both of these parts and make sure that anchored is set to true. I also just close off the output real quick, but anyways, now all we need to do is click on this platform and click on this plus icon of the right of the platform and let's insert a script. This script, let's just start off at the top by getting local tween service, which is gonna be equal to game get service tween service. And we are going to say tween service create script.parent is the instance that we're going to be tweening. Tween info dot new. I'm gonna do a time of about three seconds. The enum.easing style will be linear, and then the enum.easing direction will be in out. Keep in mind that tween info is completely adjustable to your needs, so if you want to up the time that it will take for the tween to be completed, you can do that by changing this from 3 seconds to 5 seconds or 10 seconds or however many seconds you would like to. You can also change the enum.easing style to something like exponential or elastic or even court or any of the other easing styles that are out there. I'm personally abusing it linear as before. And you can even choose the enum easing direction by doing in, out, or a mix of the both in, out. Let's put a comma after that and we're going to say the repeat count will be equal to negative one, which will mean that it goes on infinitely or for forever. Let's put a comma after that, and then reverses is going to be equal to true, which means it's going to get to our position, and then it's going to come back. Let's go forward in front of this parenthesis, and now we need to define a property table for our tween. Let's put a pair of braces right here, and we're going to say C frame, which stands for coordinate frame, and this is going to be equal to game.workspace.endpoint.c frame. Let's go to the front of our line of code right here, and we can actually say play with a pair of parentheses at the end right there. What this is going to do is it's going to create a tween for our platform right here using tween service. Now tween service is a service that we use to tween things, and tweening is the act of animating an object that's not properly rigged. Forgot to put a comma between our tween info parentheses right here and the property table braces right here. So now we have a comma right there. We should be able to click on run and you will notice our platform is now moving to our endpoint position and that is going to be moving back and then going back and forth just like that. So that's what we need to go ahead and do in order to create our platform that's going to be moving. And now we just need to create the way that will, I guess, stick the player to the part while it's moving. And you'll see what I mean by that. So let's click on stop real quick. And we can close off the platform, we can close off the workspace for now. Let's go right over to starter player, open up starter character scripts, and then click on the plus icon and insert a local script. This local script you can name to whatever you'd like to, it doesn't really matter, but we're going to start off right here at the top with some services. Now if you're new to the channel, I like to make comments separating the different parts of our script. We usually have services, variables, functions, all sorts of different parts of a script right here that we separate using these comments just to make the code more organized and readable. However, it's completely optional so you do not have to include that if you would not like to. The first service that we're going to get is going to be local players, which will be equal to game get service players. The player service is this player service right up here that you see. If we were to click on this drop down menu and click on play and then open up the player service, you should notice your character inside of the player service. For me, it's Rusty Silly Band right here. However, your character should be there instead for you. Let's go ahead and stop the game and get back to our local script. So yeah, the player service holds all the different players inside of your game. Let's also go ahead and get run service, which will be equal to game get service run service. Now run service, it's not one of these container services as you can see inside the Explorer. It's what we call a built-in scripting service. Run service is all about time. 
it holds different ways to measure time to run functions every frame all sorts of different things i can show you a little bit later let's drop down a few lines here and we're going to get into the next section of our script and we're going to call this one variables once again separating it with a comment and we're going to say local player will be equal to players dot local player now if you don't know starter character scripts whenever the player joins the game once their character loads fully then what this is going to do it's going to take all the scripts inside of starter character scripts and it's going to move it over to the player's character which means that when this local script is inside of the player's character we can say local player will be equal to players dot local player and it will get that local player which is the player that this local script is inside of meaning that we simply have a easy access to the player that we want to be accessing which is pretty cool in my opinion let's also go ahead and get the player's character which will be equal to player dot character or player dot character added colon weight we're also going to drop down a little bit and we're going to create a brand new variable called local function this variable it's a little hard to explain without the rest of the script for the moment so i'm going to be going back over it and explain it a little bit better at the end here but this variable is simply going to hold what we call a connection to our other function that we are going to be doing later on we're also going to need another blank variable or an empty variable is what we call it or something that we'll call the last platform c frame which is going to be the last C frame of the platform that we're standing on that was recorded at a certain time. So we're going to be using these variables in a function later on. And by later on, I mean now, because we're getting on to our third part of our script, the functions part of our script. And we're going to create a brand new local function, and this one will be called on heartbeat. If you're wondering why I call it on heartbeat, it's because if we go up here, we can say run service dot heartbeat. Now heartbeat is going to fire every frame after the physics simulation has completed, which is just a fancy way of saying that it's going to run every single frame. So we can say run service dot heartbeat, and then we're pretty much going to run this function every single time that this heart beats or that every single frame inside of our game. So we're going to say local function on heartbeat. And we're going to start off by getting the player's root part, which is going to be equal to character, wait for child, humanoid, root part. Now, if we play the game real quick and then go over to the workspace and open up your character, my character is Rusty Silly Band, but your character might be a little bit different. You'll notice all these different body parts. You know, you have the head, the left foot, the left hand, the left lower arm, all these different body parts, but you'll come across something called the humanoid root part. Now, the humanoid root part is a part that every single character has inside of Roblox Studio, and it's simply, you can think of it sort of like the main torso. It's sort of an invisible part that the player can't see, but it's the root part of the player pretty much. I don't really know how to explain it other than it's like the rib cage almost. You can't see your rib cage from the outside, but you know it's there. So the humanoid root part uh, to a player is kind of like a rib cage to a human in a way. Now let's go ahead and drop down a few lines and we're going to be using ray casting to determine if there's a platform underneath the player at a given moment. So what we need to do for ray casting is we need to type down some parameters for that ray cast so that way when we go ahead to ray cast we can actually exclude or include certain objects so we're going to say local ray cast params or ray cast parameters is going to be equal to ray cast params dot new and then we can go on to say and i guess establish some properties for this ray cast params or these ray cast parameters and raycast param dot filter descendants instances will be equal to a pair of braces and this filter descendants instances is pretty much going to add a filter for the things we want to exclude from this raycast and that is going to be the character because we do not want the player's character to be involved inside of this raycast otherwise that will cause some issues or just it would be unnecessarily unoptimized so next we're going to say raycast params dot filter type will be equal to enum dot raycast filter type dot exclude 
what this is going to do is simply going to take our blacklist right here, which is everything that we have inside of this table or these pair of braces, and it's going to tell our script we want to exclude that, which means that we don't want that. Well, let's continue to drop down a few lines, and here's where we're going to actually create our raycast result, which is going to be the result of our raycast. And this is going to be equal to game.workspace colon raycast, and we use this workspace dot a workspace colon raycast I mean to say to create a raycast from a certain origin it's going to be going in a certain direction and it's going to take our racecast parameters that we just made now when we raycast it we always need to start off with what we call an origin for our raycast and the origin is simply the origin point or the origin position of the ray and this is going to be a vector three which means it needs a position with three different directions pretty much three different axes you could say as an x direction a y direction and a z direction so we need to put all three of those directions inside of here and we can do that by saying root part dot c frame dot position what this was going to do is going to provide the position of the player's humanoid root part and that is going to automatically fill in all three of those directions for us because it automatically has those three directions inside the position value. We can put a comma after this and now we need to specify the direction. Now the direction we're actually going to say vector3.new creating a new vector3 and we're going to say 0 on the x-axis and we're going to do negative 50 on the y-axis and then another 0 on the z-axis. Now what this is going to do is going to take the position of our player's root part and that's going to go downwards 50 studs which means that anything below the player for 50 studs is going to be able to be inside of this raycast and then let's go outside of this direction property and now here's where we need to go ahead and create the raycast params which we already have created so we can just specify those raycast params right there let's go ahead and press enter now and now that we have this raycast result, we can check if there was a raycast result and the raycast result dot instance, which is the actual thing that the raycast hit dot name will be equal equal to platform then. So inside of the workspace, we have our part named platform. So if the raycast actually hit our platform, then here's what we're going to do. We're going to get our local platform I don't need a capital F for that. Platform C frame. And this is going to be equal to raycast result dot instance dot C frame, just like this. And then we're going to check if there was a last platform C frame, as we see right up here. Then let's just go over to the end of here. Then what this is going to mean is that if there was a last recorded C frame of our platform, which means that if this function has already ran before, pretty much, then we're going to get local rel, which is going to stand for relative transformation. And this relative transformation is going to be between the current platform and the last platform. It's going to be the transformation that's used to adjust the character's position, which is relative to the platform's movement. So local relative transformation will be equal to platform C frame times last platform C frame colon inverse with parentheses and this is going to get that relative transformation that we need for our platform now we're simply going to say root part dot c frame with a capital f will be equal to and this is going to be rel times our root part dot c frame so what this is going to do is going to take our humanoid root part c frame and it's going to equal it to rel times the root part dot c frame which will pretty much just update the player's c frame according to the platform let's drop down and say else which means if there was no raycast result or if the raycast result was not a platform then otherwise we're going to say last platform c frame will be equal to nil and this is all that we need to do for our on heartbeat function so once again this on heartbeat function is going to be called every single frame using the run services heartbeat event we start off the function by getting the player's humanoid root part which represents the character's root part inside of the game world now we're going to set up some parameters for our raycast which if you don't know what raycasting is i probably should explain that earlier but it's a method for detecting 
detecting certain objects along a line inside of a 3D space. Here we're using it to check below the player for any platform. Then it's going to perform the raycast that we just created. It's going to perform it downwards from the character's root part right here, the root part's position. And it's going to check for any platforms within that 50 stud distance below the player. Then if a platform was found and its name was platform, that's going to retrieve the C frame of the platform right here. It's going to check if there was a last platform C frame, which means that this function has already ran before. Then it's going to calculate the relative transformation that we we're talking about between between the current platform and the last platform or the last platform's position and the current platform's position which is the same platform but the last position I mean to say and then this transformation is going to be used to adjust the character's position relative to the platform's movement inside of this line of code where it will update the character's position based off of that relative transformation. And then last but not least, I believe I forgot a line of code actually. We're gonna say last platform C frame will be equal to platform C frame. So this is going to update the last platform C frame to the current platform C frame before it goes ahead and loops on to the next function. And then last but not least, if no platform was found, it's going to reset this variable to nil. So let's go down here a little bit. And we're gonna say our capital F function up here which is this variable that we made earlier, is going to be equal to run service dot heartbeat. And we're going to connect our on heartbeat function. The reason why we're doing it this way, which we have the function which is going to be equal to this event right here, is because up here, we're actually going to create another local function for when the character dies. So we're going to say on character died. And then we're simply going to say function disconnect just like this. And what that's gonna do is going to pretty much stop the run service from repeating itself. Because if we just said run service dot heartbeat connect function, there's no way to really stop this function unless we did something like break, which wouldn't work because not actually inside of a loop at all. But you'll see it's not actually going to be able to stop like this unless we do something more complicated. So it's an easier way to just set this run service function equal to a variable and then we can disconnect that connection. So now we just need to create one last event for our on character dying. So we're going to say character dot humanoid dot died died connect function well not function we can actually just connect our on character died right here and get rid of those parentheses and we should be good to go now so let's go ahead and press play and let's test this out now joining the game let's hop on our platform you'll notice we'll actually be moving with our platform due to that relative transformation that we were talking about now if i were to go ahead and step off the platform you'll see i'm no longer moving with it However, even though I'm on top of it, I can jump around on the platform and I'm still moving with it, which is pretty cool. And if I'm on it and I tend to die, maybe there's a kill brick that you can add to your game, then it will no longer be working as well because I have died. And yeah, so this is how we're going to create a moving platform that will move the player along with it. If this tutorial helped you a lot, please make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. I hope this helped you a ton and I will see you in the next tutorial. Have an amazing day and goodbye.